Um, well, at, at the moment, I'm doing just uh, promotion and stuff. And then after that, I, I, I think I'll see if I can get a band together. So then I'll probably tour. I don't like schlepping around the hotels, though. I, I must admit, I don't like the sort of endless hotel rooms and sort of... Because you, you're sitting there and you've had a great successful concert, hopefully, anyway. And you're sitting there and you're eating a half a cheese sandwich curled up at the edge and you think, so this is what it's all about, fame. And, you know, it's, it slightly like it takes the edge off it a little bit. So, but I do like performing. How do you enjoy performing, let it be at Live Aid? How was it for you? It was very good. I enjoyed it a lot, except my microphone went off. Um, just sort of funny, really, because I was... It was very... It was kind of loosely organised, the show, and... But because it was for charity and because it was all going to do such a great thing, um, uh, nobody seemed to mind, really. So I just found the piano. It was the first I'd seen it. I said, where's the piano? Someone said, that. So I kind of found that and sort of sat down and thought, you know, time to go. <laughs> so I rode, he kind of went, eh, go. <laughs> okay. Ha. So I started off, you know. And I couldn't hear anything. Oh, oh, oh. I thought, well, wait a minute. Should I stop? And I, I noticed the monitor wasn't working near me. And that's not unusual, really. So often those things don't work. So I thought, no, this is the BBC. This is world <laughs> coverage. They're bound to have it. Someone's got it, you know, on another feed. This is bound to be on. I thought, I can't stop in front of all these people. So I'm going away. Let it be. Let it be. And I hear the audience go, hey! On one of the lines, I think they've got the significance of that line. Good. Turned up the only line they heard. I know some people who were at the uh, Philadelphia concert, and they said, we didn't notice. Sounded like the mic was on to us. So I was lucky, really, to get away with that. And in fact, I did an interview with some fellow the other day. He said, it was, he was a German. He said, we saw that it was a very warm moment. Human. I said, well, that suits me. Human. <laughs> Put it down to human. You recently performed at the Prince Charles Charity Trust. Yeah. The Tina Turner singing Get Back. That must have been exciting. That was great fun. The mic stayed on. <laughs> so that was really a plus. Um, that was really brilliant. I, I really enjoyed that show. Because um, they kind of said to me, you're going to do it at last minute and stuff. And I said, well, I haven't got a band. They said, well, you've got one. And we got Phil Collins, Elton John, and Knopfler, Eric Clapton. Millions of great people. A lot of the people I admire. And so that was something you just wanted to be at. You know, and it was kind of honor to be asked. So I did Sora standing there and Long Tool, Sally. And then they threw in Get Back when, when we arrived, when I arrived on the day. They said, let's do Get Back. I said, I don't know the words. <laughs> so that was we quickly sent out for a port, uh, song folio. <laughs> Jojo words, and man, that's it. Yeah, I've got it now. And then Tina sings the wrong words anyway. She doesn't care. She sings, sweet Loretta Morgan. It's Martin, Tina. I didn't, I didn't tell her on the day. I thought, well, it sounds good. Morgan, Martin. It's a difference. <laughs> I love Tina anyway, she's a wonderful person. I mean, I've admired her for years, so it's just a great thrill. And I'll tell you what, singing with her, boy, she lifts you. Because she's just so into it that you just, woo. It's such fun. A lot of the people that you started out with in the 60s are very hot right now. Eric Clapton, Steve Winwood, the Moody Blues. These are not 18-year-olds that are, you know, number one. Are you, sure. are you surprised to see them? I'm not surprised, really, no. I think uh, the nice thing is that um, staying power, you know, if, if you're good, you go out of fashion. People think you're a bit boring and you have not too good an album or something, but if you're good, you can come back, you know, and uh, it's not everyone that is good. You know, there's a lot of people aspiring to be good and stuff. I think a lot of the, the younger groups, particularly in the 70s, had a lot of problems because they couldn't actually play. Mm. They could look good and they could, you know, maybe sing good. It's not that easy to play that guitar, you know. That's 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 difficult to find you, and once you've got, you, you once you know your way around the flat, fretboard, it's it's actually very difficult to string it together in a professional way. Anyone can go, but to go do well and get that technique together, sometimes takes twenty years to do. Um, it's it's very helpful, you know, to me. It's, it's very good, They're very supportive in my life. I keep expecting, you know, with kids, you keep expecting them to turn around and sort of say, oh, you know, your music stinks, we're into this, you know, which you do expect, 
and everyone uh, expects it too. The interviewers always sort of say, and you know, do your kids tell you they don't like your... But um, mine seem to be very supportive and they, they seem to like their old dad, you know. What about, great. what about being married for 17 years? What about yeah, it? It's pretty incredible. Yeah. For anybody. Guinness Book of Records time. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, we're surprised constantly, you know, because, I mean, they did always say that when you kind of get past 40, like the years seem to flick by, and they really do. God, it's terrifying. So, but, but you know, 17 years, yeah, she's a great woman, very strong woman, very misunderstood, because when she does interviews, tends to tense up, because she's not really a sort of professional person that way. She's... She's not used to being in the public eye. She's used to being behind the camera, which is a lot easier uh, than actually sitting there and explaining, trying to justify living. Mm -hmm. I'm okay, honest, mm -hmm. you know. So she, whenever she gets in front of a camera, she does tend to be very serious and talk about issues that concern her deeply, which a lot of people like. But some people, I think, take it as a hardness and a sort of coldness, mm -hmm. which is the very opposite of how she is, actually. She's, she's a great cook. Great mother. She's, she's a good girl. How do you see yourself primarily, or in what order? Your family man, musician, songwriter, what, where in that do you find it yourself? sounded good. Yes, you know, um, I think in my early days I would have naturally put art first. Um, but when you get kids, when you get married and when you get kids, some people still keep the art first. But then, where does that leave the kids, you know? And they're kind of living, breathing, real uh, people, you know, and they need attention. So I always put them before music, really, much as I love music. If it's a choice, there's, there's, there's no contest. Mm. Do your kids sing with you at all when you travel? Yeah, I think they're a little self-conscious of kind of singing with me because, you know, anyone else around who hears it says, ah, you know, oh, he's taking after his dad or she's taking after him. <laughs> But they've each, one of them, they can sing, they can sing in tune. But I really don't push them to do anything, you know. I just like to let the natural thing come out. Um, so they, we, we do little bits and pieces. Uh, you know, we, we made up songs one morning. I've got, I've got a little home studio. We were on holiday and uh, I said, let's still make up a song. So Stella's was very like something out The Wizard of Oz. Mary's was a bit more original, pretty good actually. I immediately snapped up the publishing on that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't really, just joke, viewers. Um, and Heather's was a punk number, taken from a tin of baby milk, <laughs> which is called SMA, and it's got all the ingredients. She read all the ingredients to a punk backing, which is great. It was just a, you know, a loon. What if they come home and say, Dad, we want to be rockers, we want to be punkers, put razor blades in our nose? They've done it already. <laughs> this, my 23-year-old went through a phase of uh, punk, which you've got to allow, you know. You can't say, hey, no, you know, you can't grow your hair long and stuff, because that's what we went through. So I always knew when, when that came up, I'd have to, like, allow it. doesn't mean you're going to like it or not worry about it, because, I mean, what happens is it makes you understand what your own parents went through when you have kids. Because, you know, I could never understand why my dad didn't want me to wear tight trousers and... I have long hair. I thought there's nothing wrong with it. You know, what's, what's up? But I think, I understand now, he thought I was hanging out with the wrong crowd. And I was. No, some of the time I was. But um, it was really harmless. It was a fashion. It was just a look, you know. And when Heather got into it, at first, we were a little bit um, worried about what it might lead to, I don't know, just traditional parents. Whereas you can't help it. You think you're going to be madly liberal, but then it happens, and you go, oh. So, um, but the great thing was all her friends she used to bring around were real sweeties. They were like animal lovers and very interested in conservation. And you think, well, you've got pins in your nose. You can't be into, into that. They're really nice, you know. It was surprising, actually. Again, it was just a fashion. Kids yeah. are just the same. Do you look for their approval musically at all? I mean, do you actually seek their them out? Their approval? Yeah. I don't actually look for it, no. I mean, the only approval I really look for is my own because it's the only way to do it. I've tried it every which way, you know, and it really is the only thing that counts, is if you like it, then you can give it to the world, and, and at least when the critics say it's a bunch of rubbish, say, well, I like it. And as long as you're convinced you do like it, 
um, just the main thing.